All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Raiders Daily, where we post daily Las Vegas Raiders content. If that is something you enjoy, enjoy this video. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. So it feels honestly now that, I mean, June is almost over here, but now that the off season is kind of starting to, I don't know if stagnates the right word, but it's definitely dying down. I think that's that's a word I'm looking for. Now that free agency, the off season, it, it's kind of beginning to kind of quiet off a little bit. I think people are starting to finally look at the Raiders as a legitimate Super Bowl contender. I mean, I was, I think it was on NFL Live or something like that, and they had they showed something it was some indicator and it was like the raiders have a 16 percent chance of winning the afc west i'm looking at them like bro a 16 percent chance to win the afc west this team bro this is the thing with the charger the the chargers this is the thing with the raiders they're better than the chargers and they're better than the broncos it's not that the raiders the raiders were already good dude the Raiders were already good. Did the Chargers have a good offseason? Yes. Did the Broncos have a good offseason? Yes. Am I afraid of Russell Wilson? What do I look like? Who Name one person on the planet afraid of Russell Wilson. There's The answer is nobody. Maybe his wife, when he sees him making another stupid-ass TikTok, like, he can stick to his TikToks and try and figure out whatever the hell it is with the Broncos. I think the Broncos are a good team, but, like, Russell Wilson doesn't scare me in any fac facet, any facet at all. And then with the Chargers, like, the Chargers had a good season, but once again, or a good offseason, you're catching up to the Raiders. The Raiders were already good, bro. They went out, they got Devontae Adams, they went out, they got Chandler Jones, you got young guys coming in like Rocky Hassan, Anthony Everett, you had a killer draft without even having a first or second round pick. Like, no. You have to catch up to the Raiders. The Raiders aren't the ones that have to do the catching up. I think the Chiefs, obviously, they're a really good team. Anytime you got Patrick Mahomes there as the QB, you're going to be relevant. So I saw 16% like the fuck. 16%? What? They, you, they got to catch them. So why? Why do I have so much faith in the Raiders? I feel like genuinely I don't even really need to explain I think it really boils down to Josh McDaniels because I've been seeing a lot of people are hesitant, you know, thinking, oh, you know, let's let's wait. Let's hold off. Let's see how Josh McDaniels does. Let's see, you know, how the team reacts to him, yada, yada, yada. We'll give him a year, you know, blah, 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 blah. Well, that is true. That is true. But real quick, I want to look at I want to talk about the personnel first off. Because Josh McDaniels is extremely respected across the league for his basketball mind, his talent, his coaching ability. He's extremely highly respected. Like it, it, I know he's part of the Belichick tree, but still, that garnishes a lot of attention and respect of its own. But McDaniels has put in the work. It's not like you know he's just been handed this because he worked with Bill Belichick. The Raiders got Devontae Adams, best wide receiver in the league, and they got Chandler Jones, who literally all time is the leading sack leader for the Arizona Cardinals. And both of these cats, it's not like Chandler Jones is old, where you know he's like 36 years old, like almost like a Sue, where it's like, all right, yeah, you know, it's okay, he's still good, but Chandler Jones moves the needle. Max Crosby on the other end of him. I mean, this is the best edge duo. This is the best duo on the defensive foot end of the football. Like it, it's just it's just a straight up fact. I think Khalil Mack and, jo and Joey Bosa. I think that they will be number two, but I would say undisputed is it's either the Chargers or the Raiders. I, I I don't really I can't think of anybody you would put over that duo. Obviously, it's contingent on all four of them staying healthy, but we're not making a Chargers video right now. So Max Crosby is that freaking dude. I mean, he came out last season before last season started. He's like, I need to do well. Like I need to have the the, my, the future of my career stands on this season. He's this guy's young as fuck. He's like, I'm gonna have the best year of my NFL career. What did he do? Exactly that. I mean, he's that guy. He's ascending into a superstar right before our eyes, and it's beautiful to watch. I mean, he led the league in pressures last year. So the defense alone is gonna keep you into football games. The defense alone has your 
back. I guarantee you, man, it might start off a little shaky. Obviously, you're going to go through highs. You're going to go through lows, but you want to level out. You want to get more consistent by the time the postseason comes around. And I have full faith in Patrick Graham. I have full faith in the Raiders personnel, the coaches that they brought in, and the talent that they brought in, the talent that they already possess. I mean, that's something I think that's often being overlooked right now with the Raiders as well as they retained almost all of their, they retained everybody important. All right, how's that sound? You extended Derek Carr. You extended Hunter Renfro. You extended Max Crosby. Your core guys are gonna be on this football team for years to come. And so that alone should give some type of fear to opposing teams. But like I said, and this I guess is kind of my, my last and final point here, is Josh McDaniels is a G, all right? When he was with Denver, I don't even, bro, first off, everybody makes mistakes. Like, if you don't make, make mistakes, like, there's something wrong. It's a red flag to me. Josh McDaniels, I almost am glad that he suffered and struggled so much in his time with the Denver Broncos. Like, I am glad that that happened because some people fold, you know, they crumble under this pressure. Your stereo, or not your stereotypical, your average, your below average NFL coach would have had a tenure like Josh McDaniels and just either been like, all right, you know, I'm not, I can't be a coach in this league, I'm done. I'm going to take offensive coordinator position. That job is not for me. That was too much. I didn't really like it. You know, I, I'm not built for it. But excuse, excuse, excuse. Josh McDaniels is completely flip flopped. First off, he's not going to be have to be a GM. So that's right off the right off the get-go right off the bat that is just absolutely money to hear and it's a lot less pressure and it's a lot less duties for josh but speaking of which josh is not a loser you know he's not how i just described loser coaches i mean josh mcdaniels is a winner he's a culture setter he builds he grows he progresses he's got a chip on his shoulder he has quite honestly every single thing i would look for in an nfl coach I'm so glad that he failed with the Denver Broncos, and I know for a fact he is glad he did too. Because he, he, if he didn't fail in Denver, he wouldn't be where he is today. He wouldn't have learned everything he's learned. He wouldn't have experienced everything he's experienced. He's hit his low. He's been at rock bottom before, and he grew it up and got back, got back in the lab, got back to work, and I think it's a very admirable trait for Josh and especially being the Raiders head coach I mean that is just music to my ears that I know this guy has everyone's back I know he's gonna put in the work and I have full faith in Josh McDaniels for figuring shit out he's gonna be the key to the Raiders success and even if you want to point out like the Raiders worst weak spot offensive line I mean it's brand new coaching it's brand new personnel it's a brand new scheme like they made some adjustments their guys are going to continue to develop. They're progressing. They're getting chemistry together. And they made some moves, most notably Dylan Parham in the draft. So I have zero worries about the offensive line. And I have zero worries about the Las Vegas Raiders in general. If you guys enjoyed today's video, you want daily Raiders content, hit that like button, hit that sub button. And I hope you guys have a blessed weekend. Peace.